Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and um, that was Twiglet, and uh, we're here to have some fun, to do some drawing. As you saw last week, we did various kind of coffee clutch, coffee vessels, and it was a, a lot of drawings, and a lot of drawings within each drawing, which is nice to see. So today is... Um, going to be a special episode. We're going to do something different. We're going to have a guest on, which has been ages since we've had a guest. And <clears throat> that is going to be coming up in a couple minutes. I was going to say a very special episode. Do you remember when, when they, ha they had that in, I guess back when I was in high school, and they would have your favorite show, and they would say, in this week, a very special episode. And that usually meant that like somebody had died or somebody had become a drug addict or something con controversial was going to be discuss. Well, it's not this week. We're going to talk about art supplies, hopefully non-controversially. But let me just tell you about a couple of things um, that are exciting that are coming up. One of them is the Draw-a-thon. I think I mentioned that to you before, but it's going to be this Saturday, day after tomorrow, starting at six in the morning till six in the evening. It's open to everybody. You're welcome to come and join us. You don't have to uh, draw for 12 hours, unless you want to. Um, you can come for any time you want. We're going to have lots of different guests who are going to be giving us prompts and playing music and doing all kinds of stuff to keep us busy and uh, company while we are drawing. If you can't think of what to draw, we're going to have thousands of ideas for, for you. And if you ever, ever wanted to just like kind of hunker down and work on a single project or try a whole big series of things, this is the opportunity to do that and have a bunch of people around you who are doing the same thing. So if you'd like to um, join us, it's going to be on a Zoom thing and you can turn on your camera or not turn on your camera. You can chat with other people. You can talk with other people. You can just keep your head down and make work. But if you'd like information about it, um, info at sketchbookschool.com. Write to us. Tell us, hey, can you send me the information about that? And we'll just send you the Zoom link. We don't want to put it on YouTube for obvious reasons. So, um, But everybody is invited. You can ask uh, somebody to do it with you if you want to, and we'll give them the information too. So that's cool. Um, Saturday, six, uh, six in the morning, Pacific, daylight, time. Um, we have a new workshop coming up that we're very excited about, coming up in a couple of weeks, Yummy Color, and it is going to be an opportunity to really learn how to combine art supplies, which is part of what we're going to be doing today, uh, combining um, different art supplies to create vibrant effects and to just have fun creating something densely layered. It's going to be a really cool workshop. If you want to find out more about it, school.tiny.us slash yum. Go there and you can find out more information. And it is being sponsored by Derwent. So um, that workshop is being presented. An instructor is a phenomenal teacher named Lindsay Wyrick, who is, um, has an incredible channel here on YouTube as well called The Frugal Crafter. And Lindsay is going to be our guest today, and we're going to draw with Lindsay, and we're going to talk about art supplies, we're going to have fun. Let me just forewarn you, you're going to be able to use all those art supplies that have been lying around in boxes or drawers or cupboards. Start dragging them out into the room, because we're going to go through a lot of art supplies today. That's going to be what the fun of this exercises today. We're doing what we call an art supply relay. What does that mean? I'll tell you in a minute. And uh, trust me, it's going to be a blast. Lindsay's also on the Art for All podcast this week. And she and I had a great conversation about shopping and shopping for art supplies. And just what does it mean to, <laughs> to love art supplies? What does that mean as an artist, as a person? Um, you know, looking for bargains, looking for new things. We talked about all kinds of stuff. And you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts or you can go to artforall.buzzsprout.com. You can also listen to it here on our YouTube channel because we record video of our, of our podcast interviews and Lindsay and I are there in all our glory on camera so you can see us while we're talking. And without further ado, Lindsay, are you ready for your close-up? 
Yes, there yes, she is. Yes, hello. <laughs> there she is. So um, let me. So L Lindsay is. Um, she's used to being on camera, right? You're on camera almost every day, aren't you? You do stuff all the time. Yes. Yep. I mostly daily, but not always. Um, I'm, I don't always have my face on camera. Only probably once or twice a week for that. But um, well, do you have other body parts? Your, your, your mostly feet, my hands. Your... It's mostly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's mostly my desk. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. It's nice to see you when you're making art, though, to see your enthusiasm, because I know you love making art, right? You've, t t how did you come to make art? Have you, did you go to art school? Have you always been an artist? No, I didn't go to art school. Um, I would have loved to, but uh, when it came to college time, my parents didn't, didn't think that was a very viable option. So I went to broadcasting school, actually. Oh. But yeah, I started um, I started painting as a child, um, just kind of on my own. But I lived across the field from a wonderful watercolor painter named Pauline Turner. And my parents asked about art lessons from her because she did teach um kids and uh generally she didn't start them till they were seven i was five and she looked at some of my work and decided to uh teach me drawing and you had to start with drawing with her that was it was it was non-negotiable and then after you did drawing for a couple of years you could go to watercolor and that's the path i did until i was about 13 and then i kind of i was just more experimental and probably a big pain in the behind and i decided to do my own thing because i was a rebellious teenager and um yeah that that's kind of how it goes and i just would take a workshop here or there or just mostly just a lot of exploring on my own but i hate to use the term self-taught because i don't think that's an accurate term because you take so much from um if you're reading from a book or watching a video or taking a class you're taking influences from all over the world i mean it may be self-initiated but i i don't think it's really self-taught because that's kind of not giving credit to the people that put that work out there to begin with um but i don't have a an art school education i should say and yet you're still allowed to do it you don't need to you don't, oh, need, to, no. you don't need to be <laughs> licensed by the state or have uh, some sheepskin hanging on the wall no i also think it's kind of on the flip side of that as an artist we're always learning right we're always being self-taught so you might have gone to art school but the idea that your art education ended when you were 22 or something you know is nonsense you keep learning new stuff making new stuff trying new stuff trying new materials um being influenced and inspired by other people changing your ideas it's not it's not like you you know get there you never get there as an artist right it's, it's a journey right once you start stop growing you start dying you've got to you've got to always be um trying new things and exploring i mean you even look at the like the the great painters the most famous painters in the world and they always take off roads they try different materials they try different styles um they're always growing and they don't really care what is going to be trendy they're just going to go where their interests lead them otherwise you're going to get burnt out if you get tired of doing the same thing every day which is really easy to happen i think if you do if you teach you can get burnt out because it's you've got to make sure you're growing your skills um because if you stay in that same level of what you're teaching all the time you're going to get tired of it and burnt out and then you're not going to have the enthusiasm to offer your students and you might even resent them so you always have to be growing that's a good point i think we've all seen this sort of bitter art director our art teacher right the high school mm -hmm. art teacher who's just like taught the same lesson plans for years and doesn't get to do their own stuff i was talking to a friend yesterday who's an art teacher and she said i just want to take some time to make my own art Art, because it also makes me a better teacher. So I think it's a I think it's a common thing that we that we kind of get into a, a rut that we can get into. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about what we're going to do this today. <clears throat> Once I stop choking. Um, my thought was, and we haven't done this in a long time, is to an art supply relay is basically you pick any i mean gather all your stuff around you i have i actually just got a second cart so and i have two carts at the ready within arm's length from um from my table here get all different kinds of stuff it could be colored pencils watercolors markers ink whatever it is you want to have and we're going to set a timer and then every couple of minutes the timer will go off and at that minute, you have to stop what you're doing and grab something else. I kind of think it's cool to grab something random, but it might be 
you know, it might be a different color. You know, you might say, you know what, I want to work in f uh, five different kinds of red, and I want to do watercolor red and colored pencil red and marker red, and but, you know, you might want to do that, or you might want to grab just anything, just kind of clutch and go, oh, okay, I came up with a pencil, so I'm going to work with that. And then, uh, oop, blah, blah, blah. I came up with a bottle of white ink. Now what am I going to do with it? So you never quite know what you'll come up with, um, but it is, it's an opportunity to just play. And sometimes it can be frustrating because you can be in the middle of working with something, the bell goes off, you've got to put it down. And it's also kind of difficult to plan out exactly how it's going to go because you never know whether... Um, you know, are you going to have time for it to dry? Are you going to have time? F um, are you going to cover enough of an area? So we may end up with a mess. I hope you're okay with that, Lindsay. I'm fine with a mess. I, I always, my paintings always go through a hot mess sta stage. So if they end that way, that'll be fine. <laughs> right. Okay. And it's two and a half minutes. It's not going to be hugely fast. We could make it shorter. Do you want to make it shorter? I could make it shorter. Um, well, I'm, I'm working on a nine by 12. What size are you working on? Um, yeah, basically the same size, nine by 12. Uh, whatever you think, whatever you think is fine. Let's go two minutes. I'm going to, I'm going to change it to two minutes. I think that's what I'm feeling. I think so we can really, okay. So here's what we're going to draw. Some gourds. It's the time. This is JJ's suggestion. She said, draw gourds. She wanted us to draw that, uh, kind of that special colored corn, what's called Mexican corn. And I couldn't yeah. find, yeah, I, I, th I think this is enough. These gourds are really interesting. They're great colors, they're great textures. I've never drawn a gourd before. I'm sure you have, have you? Yeah, yep. I always okay. pick some up at the supermarket uh, this time of year and use them. I bring them to the class and stuff, yeah. Yeah, they're really beautiful. Um, so if you want to download this picture for some reason, there's the URL to do it, um, but I think this will be nice. And as you can, and again, don't feel like you have to use orange, white, gray, green, you know, whatever. You can use any colors you want. You can do, I just think there's a lot of interesting textures. It will be cool. All right. As, as Jen says, gorgeous. Yes, it will be gorgeous. I love the pun. That's so good. <laughs> that is a good pun. And uh, yeah, or you could use gouache on your gourds, whatever. We'll see. We'll come up with something cool. Um, first of all, let me go ahead here. I want to change this timer though. Okay. So I'm going to change the timer. Don't worry. We, you'll have a second. I'm going to get it. Okay. Um, we're going to start again. Here we go. So take a deep breath, get ready to start grabbing stuff. I have lots and lots and lots of boxes of colored pencils right now. So I may have to go, I may have to start there. So you might want to kind of at least open the containers. Um, but the rule is one thing, one red pencil, one, I'm not sure what you do with watercolor. Like I can just have one marker and not like a handful of markers, just one marker for the two minutes. I, I can't, maybe. Yeah. One marker. Okay. I know, oh, yeah. I got to choose wisely. I know exactly. All right. But okay. don't choose too hard because it, the randomness is good. Now, what do we do when we have um, a palette of watercolors though? See, I was thinking that's like one supply, like the set of watercolors is one supply or a set of pastels is one supply. We could do it that way if you want. That's what, what I was thinking, think? but I don't care. I don't care. Okay. Well, let's see. Okay. I think it'll be more interesting if we're using all watercolors, right? Because then we'll get more colors in there. So let's yeah. do it that way. Let's try it your way. And if it's an utter failure, then you're completely responsible. Yeah, I'll take full responsibility. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. <sighs> um, yeah, some people are having a problem with this download. They shouldn't be. This is a website with gazillions of pictures on it. You should be able to find something. But don't worry. Just use this thing on screen. We'll show it on screen the whole time, and uh, we'll figure it out later. Here we go. All right, you got two minutes. All right, so you'll be able to see my screen it's, it was too technically complicated for us to sort of um, to have Lindsay's screen on this, unfortunately. But we will get to see li where Lindsay's at on every given increment of the journey. And uh, Lindsay, you, you, you probably have developed the skill 
of being able to talk and draw at the same time, right? Pretty well, yeah. yeah. I have the gift for gab, I guess. I always get in trouble at school for talking, so. Well, <laughs> feel free Second to gab year. away. Oh. So what are you using first? What's your first? Uh... I am using a uh, brush tip alcohol marker. Okay. And I figure that uh, that will give me... Um, that'll give me a nice thin flat layer that will dry quick. So I won't have problems. Yeah, I was with, probably like, originally right. thinking that I would just do like lay down some big splashes of watercolor that I could then do in the background. But for some reason, I picked up this brown pencil. I'm not sure why uh -huh. I picked up a brown pencil, but I did. <laughs> and uh, now I'm just kind of drawing the whole thing to just have, I don't know. Again, not really the way that I work normally. Normally, I just I I don't do like an overall sketch, but for some reason that's what moved me today. So uh, I've switched to a black marker though because I want to put in some uh, some deep background shadows. But I'm kind of like don't know if that was a wise decision because I know that countdown. I'm not even looking at the, the countdown. You got eleven seconds. Then. All right, you're in trouble now. I'm not in trouble. I got this, Danny. Don't okay. you worry one single bit. All right, good. Uh, all right, that was it. Let's see what you got. Oh, my God. You did the whole thing. Awesome. All right, good. So so that's alcohol markers, which means you can slather yeah. stuff on top, right? Oh, yes. Without fear of impunity. Okay. Big um, breath, baby. All right. Let's, let's get, get out your next thing. What's a, oh, I got it. Ready? I'm ready. I'm going to use Derwent Inktense Pan Paints. Oh, the pan paints. That's cool. I love their pan paints. I'm going to go just whatever comes up on my watercolor palette. All right, here we go. All right. Yikes. I am just, I'm just like uh, base coat and color. I'm trying to cover as much ground as possible. So I'll be able to finish a nine by 12 in this amount of time, or at least attempt to. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying to put down some base coat as well. I like the base coat idea. Sounds like primer or something. Start broad and refine. That's how, I, you know, I've been doing Inktober. I don't know if you do Inktober or not, but um, I've been doing Inktober and I like to actually sketch with the lighter shades of alcohol marker. And then, um, and I like, I don't fine line till the end because I'm always reworking it until I get to the point where, um, you know, where I want to add that, that fine line design. Do you find that you have like a definite sequence when you do something? Well, I, I do for the point that I don't want my work to like disintegrate over the years. Not that I think it's like, you know, bound for posterity or anything, but I don't want things flaking off and like, you know, smearing around in my sketchbook or if I sell it, I don't want it to like, you know, come apart on somebody. Uh, so I do work the fat over lean basically. And even with mixed media, I'll work with, um, I want to keep the the stuff that is you know thinner faster drying on the bottom and the stuff that's more mushier on top just as a um just as a design principle and just as an archivability principle yeah i what tend to you? work in a sketchbook so i never really care about archival stuff but i mean my my, my heirs might feel differently about it but okay so we're down oh god what, i'm not even sure where I, what i'm doing but yes that's very nice. Thanks. I got some color anyway. All right. So we've got kind of some structure now. Um, I'm going to, can I dry while you're chatting? Do it. Yeah. I'm going to just tamp. All right. Um, what next? I think I'm going to use the, uh, how about, how about intense blocks? Is that you used you used um, the pan paints though, right? Yep. Yeah, the blocks are very similar. You can use them like the pan paints or scrub a brush. Right, because you can also w activate them with water, right? Oh, 
yeah. Would it be cheating for me to use the ink tense blocks too, like as drawing tools or? No, yeah, uh, th there is no cheating. This is art. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Is you, you oh, got oh, your hair. Luckily I have them right here. Put okay, your hair dryer right and your curlers what? away. All right, here we go. <laughs> One, two, three, go. All right, yikes. is a little stressful Danny <laughs> I know art is meant to be stressful this is not relaxation this is serious business oh but this gives me another idea though because if I use the ink tense blocks here I can go in with water base markers and kind of activate some of the ink tense oh that's marking. interesting so you'd activate them not with water but with with i'm going to use some um mm. some brush tip some real brush pens i think they're the the markers that have the brush bristles well is that gonna does that will it ruin them by putting other stuff on it no because um it's not like a felt tip it doesn't grab the um it doesn't absorb it doesn't it. suck up any of the material <clears throat> they stay on the breast the bristles and then um then you can just wipe them off you can just wipe them off All right, you got a minute left. Oh, goodness it's gracious. All the more, time in the world. It's moving more quickly <laughs> now. Maybe you know, this could be like the uh, the life drawing classes where like your sketches, your times would get longer. You start off with like the 30 second ones and then they'd get longer as you go. Possibly. I don't, I don't have the technology for that right now. So your timer yes. can only do two minutes? <laughs> no, my timer can do it all. My timer, <laughs> I have all the timer in the world. What's the technology you're missing then? Some person who's going to say, all right, now making it this much longer and that much longer and all this, those kinds of things. Ah. So, yeah, I'm doing a drawing that doesn't look like I made it, which is kind of weird. So it's probably the subject matter. If you gourds are a very, um, very, I don't know, a very uh, different subject matter than what you usually do, I think. That could it? be. That could be. I don't know if it's getting bleached out so, or not. Ah, so you're adding you know. more definition now and you're adding yeah. some texture with it. Okay. So let's see what happens now with the brushes. So you're going to use I them. I have my whole box of them over here. Oh my gosh. It's part of my display. It's part of the display in my art room. So <laughs> I'm just going to have to keep it on my lap. But this is my thing of oh, water so making. A, I don't th that's cheating. That does not qualify as cheating. one material. Oh, give me a break. I'm just, I can't use them all. I've got two minutes. I'll, okay, let me just grab out a couple of them. All right, I'm going to, oh boy. Cheating. What happened to this no cheating in art, Danny? I feel like you're, you're giving me a, a whole other tale here. <clears throat> all right, here we go. All you guys right. All ready? Well. I'm good. All right, here we go. But actually, you don't have my you don't have the camera over my desk, so I could be doing whatever I want to do, and you would never even know. You could have done it yesterday. <laughs> I should have. You could have like a whole team of people under your table, like Julia Child. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I didn't know what we we're gonna draw. So. Oh, that's true. Well, this could all be faked. I don't know. I don't know. I think you could trust both of us. You know, if if we're going to go to the trouble to fake this, I think we would have had a much nicer outcome so far. <laughs> I don't think we'd be <laughs> faking this. <laughs> this is not this. The flow is too slow on these pens, and this is not working out as well as I thought it would. It well, would you've be learned honest. something. I have. The flow is too slow. Interesting. Okay. I have so much kind of pigment on the page now that I can just do everything with a wet brush. And right. uh, it's all kind of working out. I'm jumping around from gourd to gourd because I don't want to have any, I don't have a gourd that just has one medium on it because then it's not going to be cohesive. That's true. So I'm jumping around a lot. This does feel like a competitive sport. They should do this in the Olympics. 
Oh yeah. Don't you think? Arts that would be my one chance to be sporty at something. I could, I could do that. Yeah. We could have like Nike could make us special smocks to wear. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Special athletic headgear. Safety goggles. Damn. <laughs> All right. Actually, it wasn't too bad. I think it's helped a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to switch again. I'm going to go with the metallic, the Derwent metallic paints, I think. I, can... I might. That's a pass. Do you clean up as you go or do you just pile it on? I'm piling. I've got a huge pile here. I'm stacking. Are Chroma Flows water based? No, they're not. They're fine. Yeah, they're wax based. They'll they'll layer up. All right. Oh my gosh, I need to wet these paints though, or they are not gonna work. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Deep breath. Go. <sighs> I wish I preactivated these because they are not going to really pack a punch unless I preactivate them. But this wet brush with my metallic paints can help activate some of the blocks from earlier. So I found that when I was using the watercolor markers just now, it didn't really yeah. activate it. I mean, they they just they added so much additional color that it didn't really help. Did you have um, real brush pens or were they uh, felt the, tip? Um, no, they're not. I think they have a real brush, don't they? I don't know. Maybe not. Are they like bristles, bristly or like? Um, no, they're flat. Like or they're foamy? flat. They're flat. So but huh. I'll have to have a look after. But I'm really, Are they filled I'm, with ink? So they're like a flat pen that's filled with ink, but they have bristles? They're watercolor. The Who makes them? Windsor Newton. Wait, you mean the the watercolor markers? Yes. Oh yeah, no, they're like um, they're like a felt tip brush tip. Yes, like the you're right. They're not a brush. They're not a brush. Tip. You're right. Yeah, I like those though. I have some of those. Those are nice. I really like them. I use them a lot. I like that they're light fast, and they blend really well. Twenty seconds. I feel like twenty seconds is all the time in the world now that like we've been doing these. <laughs> oh, really? It's, it's a leisure. You'd be taking a leisurely stroll. Yeah. Oh, my Ooh, maybe a little bit. Well, the cool thing is, as you do this, is you start getting a lot of layers. You know, yeah. that's what's cool about it is the layering, and that's when yeah. it starts to take on a new quality. Um, oh, I have such a pile here. <laughs> I'm starting to get them all over my hands too. So, okay. I think I, I was tempted to cheat and just say, I'm going to keep going with the same thing, but I'm not allowed to. Don't be a cheater. Come on. You're supposed to be a role model for these people that are watching. You know, I'm a, I'm a terrible role model in all things. You're crushing your tail, Danny. You know what? Actually, <laughs> semi cheating, I'm just going to switch to another colored pencil. No, that's really. I'm not even, I haven't even, I didn't even see what you used the last time because I was to, so focused on, on my uh, situation here. I used col uh, pro color. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going, I'm going with another kind of color pencil to help with it. All right. Pastels for me. Here we go. Boom. Oh, my paper is still wet. I don't know if the pastels are going to work too well for this. What? Give a break. Give a break. You're going so fast. My wife just stuck her head in to tell us, give a break. All right, we'll take a break after this. We'll take a break. Hi, JJ. <laughs> yes. She's right. She's right. We're completely exhausting ourselves. But it's a marathon. <laughs> Well, it's, not, it's, a relay. it's interesting that we're doing this marathon, draw a thon, and we're doing a relay. It's kind of like there's, it's like a whole track and field event. 
at sketchbook school. Or a, yeah, it totally should be in the Olympics. Maybe it should be like a like a pentathlon. That would be interesting. Mm. What would you call it? You wouldn't be an iron. It wouldn't be like oh, an Iron Man. That's it would interesting. Be yeah, like Iron I- Iron Pen. Iron Pen. I like there that. There we go. So okay. yeah, so we could have like a we could have a whole pentathlon where you have to you have to like draw a nude and then you have to do a watercolor of some flowers and then you have to um, I don't know paint a chapel ceiling and uh, you have to carve a sculpture out of marble. These the little warts on the gourds are very difficult to render in like a quick time. Particularly when you have a, um, all these layers under them, right? That's what I'm finding. Or just not not being able to take the time to um, to just do, ah! to do warts. Okay, let's take a oh, man. That's coming along really nicely, and Thank your you. your color palette is really nice. It's kind of much more um, much more kind of controlled than mine is mine is sort of oh i like that i like the complementary colors the blue and the orange i wish i wish that that had been intentional but uh, (laughs) there's very little time for thinking when you're running a relay yeah while we're breaking i'm drying this i think so what's your favorite thing to use these days Oh my gosh, I don't know. Um, I want to because right now we are in peak foliage season. So um, and I got this, um, this new tray for my French easel for my French easel. I don't use it very often because it's really heavy. And I usually plein air watercolor and I use the portable painter. Um, But I have I usually have oils in my French easel, but I bought this um, wooden insert for it that does pastels. And but it was just three big open drawers or three big open sections that are wood. And I bought some Sennelier pastels and the foam that the pastels come in fit perfectly in the drawer. So I cut the little top sheet down so it fits over them. And I think I'm gonna put these uh, these pastels here in there because they're a little firmer and they'll do better um, if I, you know, if I wanna do something like soup to nuts with one product. And I wanna load my French easel up with those pastels and go down to a local um, fish way that has some really pretty scenery and paint I'm hoping this afternoon because the the peak foliage it's 70 degrees out it's just gorgeous weather sunny so uh that's what i so i've been using pastels a lot that's what i'm excited to use today but man a different day a different medium i think i never, I'm always bound- i didn't know that it ever got to be 70 degrees in maine oh yeah the summers are gorgeous but usually it's been it's been getting chilly the summers um we can get up in the 80s sometimes we see 90s um but uh we call it getting yeah. down to the 80s <laughs> yeah, so, well, sometimes uh, we'll have a heat wave, but not very often. So if I wanted to I start do? with pastels, I pastels always kind of bug me because I, I, I remember them from like when I was a kid and I used to use pastels and mm-hmm. you end up getting a lot of like blending, like blending one to the other. And it just felt like a big mess. And particularly mm-hmm. then it starts to smear all over the place and you get it on your hands as you're doing and then you get it um, yeah. you get it on other pages of your sketchbook. It just... I, I think Renoir, and I don't really have any other feelings about pastels beyond that. So can you tell me how to get into it? Um, well, if you don't like the feeling on your hands, that's going to be a huge barrier. But there's a product called Pan Pastel, which are like these little, I don't have any in here, they're in the other room, but they're these little um, cakes of pastel. Think of like a compressed eyeshadow, and you apply them with like applicators that are like palette knives with little um, foamy socks that go on them. And that way you can keep your hands completely clean and still get the pastel look. And they're very low dust. But I love getting my hands filthy with pastels. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. And I think because I started younger before you kind of have those um want to stay clean sensory issues it's it's never bothered me i just have a like a wet rag or a a baby wipe or something that i can wipe my hands on um because i'm very meticulous i usually i actually usually just wear head to toe white and Uh um i never (laughs) pride myself on joking complete mess all the time um but yes Maybe I'll try it. I don't know. I'm also worried about it just smearing on the page and I don't know. It's like charcoal in that way. 
You can um you can use a fixative, but what I usually do if I'm using it in a sketchbook is I just tape a piece of deli paper in there just to keep it from rubbing onto the facing page, and I, it's fine. I'm not I don't like to use fixative because it alters the colors too much, um, but I mean you can definitely do that. Hey, I'm seeing in the chat that some people, you know, there's there's, there's some in every class who just don't listen to instructions, and what they've been doing is doing different drawings of the gourds each time because that's not that's actually we often do that we often will do a drawing for two minutes switch to another thing, um, mm -hmm. so that's fine if that's what you're doing that's cool too. We're Lindsay and I are just working on the same tortured, overly <laughs> layered, overworked piece. And if yeah. you, you might have a dozen fresh little pieces. All right, we've taken a break. We're jumping back into it. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna use Derwent drawing pencils, which are a gorgeous, soft, thick lead pencil. And hopefully I can retain, I can get some wart back in my gourds because they're looking a little too uh, smooth. I'm using, uh, I'm gonna use these light fast. I haven't really used light fast. Um, Pencil, these, they they were tested here in Arizona. Did you know that? They were tested. And oh, they, yeah, they do most of their light fast. ASTM does all their light fast testing in Arizona and Florida, I think, right? Yeah, they. well, I live in Arizona, so that's why I care. But they uh, <laughs> they will last for 100 years. They're my favorite Derwent pencil, honestly. Really? Oh, I love them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty creamy. They're pretty creamy. They're, are they waxy? No. I think they're technically oil-based, oil -based, but they definitely -based. feel a little more waxy. And what I like about them is how they, they mix together. You don't have to layer a bunch up. You can almost like layer, you can layer them up and then they merge. It's not like thin layers of precise, um, uh, precise layers. Like a lot of oil-based pencils are, they have a lot more, um, a lot more painterliness to them. And I think that's why I really get on with them because they're very intuitive. They have good coverage too. Yes. They're they so really, gorgeous. Yeah, they're covering nicely. Yeah, I'm trying to get into doing those warts and lumps now. Yeah, me too. Oh yeah, this pencil is really good actually. It's really, really bold. You see how it's just covers over everything really nicely. Damn it, I was having fun doing that. It's kind of annoying because because you find something that's good. Yeah, you see? right. I got some of the warts in. I'm not sure if that's going. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I, I got can, some warts. I can see in, the but... warts definitely at the bottom. I mean, I'm I'm getting a bit warty. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Oh okay. my god, I don't know what I'm going to use next. Uh... Running out of art supplies. Never thought that would happen. <laughs> I'm going to go to Conte because I have a little thing of Conte right here. All right, this is kind of scary. I'm using metallic. Wow. Ah. All right, this is... Paints this... or pencils or Pet markers? Pencils, these Derwent metallic yeah. pencils. Oh, nice. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Gosh, where do I even start with these things? Okay. This could be like a whole new school of art. I guess it's called mixed media. It's not really a new school. I didn't invent it. I think this is excellent for uh, for warming up. Yeah, and just trying out different things and seeing the differences between them and how they work with each other. It's kind of cool. Right. Plus, you burn through a lot of art supplies really quickly. But you're only using them for two minutes each, so I don't think you're going to run out of anything anytime soon. That's true. At least I'm not going to. No, but it's it's like getting them out and getting them aired out. You know, it's kind yeah. of like it's like having a really nice old car that you keep in the garage under a dust thing, and like once every three months you take it out on a Sunday. It's the yeah. opportunity to get these guys get the juices flowing in these pencils. Yeah. Get to knock the rust off of them. Right. Exactly. I'm working on stems. Stems are this uh, this two minutes. Uh, oh, that's a good idea to be more. So, you, so you're going to have all your stems in the same medium then. 
I think I'm going to start that way anyway. And stems are kind of a different medium than the rest of the gourd, so it's not unheard of. I just, I can hear, I just heard this noise. The, um, we're getting oil delivered today. I can hear the, uh, the oil man filling up the oil tank because my studio's in the basement and the oil tank's in the basement. That's like getting a gold shipment. Oh my word, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't even want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know what the bill is. <laughs> yep. Scary. All right. All right, those metallics were a little. Yeah, so now the changes are much more gradual. Yeah, but that, that I really like that lower gourd with the, the way that you use the white. That's really nice too. But yeah, your stems are, the stems are making it sharper and making it more clear what they are, what these things are. How about graphite tint? Oh, that's good. I don't know what I'm going to use next. Um, can I do a different kind of pencil? Or I could do gouache, but I don't know if I can get it up. Let me see if I can get my gouache open. So you introduced me to my new favorite kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Those are fun. Those are fun. Okay. I don't know about this, but... I don't know what I can do in two minutes with gouache, but I'm going to try. You can put on some white highlights. Mm, yes, I can. All right, here we go. Is anybody keeping track of how many we've done? Uh, I have no idea, and I'm living it. Yeah. Living it. <laughs> <laughs> living the dream, baby. <laughs> living that art supply dream. So this graphitin no is graphitin can be activated with water, Does, and I, I'm pretending that that doesn't constitute a separate medium, the water. So. Well, are you using the graphitin? You're using the pencils. Yeah. Or the pan paints, the pencils. I like the pencils. pan paints. The pan paints are. I, I prefer the pan paints and the graphitin as well. I don't have they any. Pan, I don't have any like, pan paints really. Oh, I really like the the pan paint range. I actually, that's what. Uh, I'm doing a class for them later on tonight on those. The exception actually is um, we did this class with um, Jedediah Doré, and he worked with Derwin on this type of pan that has lots of different kinds of paint in it. Not only different colors, oh, yeah. but different kinds. I forget what it's called, the sketch and... Line, line and, and wash, wash line maybe? And or... wash. Exactly, yeah, line and wash. So that has graphite tint, it has um, ink tints, it has pastels. I met Jedediah. We taught for Derwent in New York uh, in March. He's the he's the best. We just love him. He's really nice. Yeah. He teaches a he teaches for us um, in Spark like every couple weeks. No fun. Urban, urban sketching, yeah. We we're talking to him about doing a new workshop too. All right, yeah. one more. Should we do one more? One more? Uh, you think you I can feel like I need at least three more. Right, <laughs> I don't know. It, this is such a mess. All I don't right, know so what it's, I'm going to do. It's now quarter to 10. So we could okay. do, we could do, let's do three more. Let's do three more. You know what I'm going? I'm going in the complete opposite direction. I'm going fine point, fine liner. Fine liner. I think it will ruin a fine liner if I use it over... The stuff I've already used. I have lots of fine liners. I'm willing to ruin one. But you do you. What are you going to do? How about crayon? I'm going to use crayon. crayon. Pick crayon. There you go. Hold on. I like it. I got crayon. I'm going to use. I've never used these before. I'm going to use these Crayola. Uh, these Crayola peel, peel back like they're like China markers. I'm going to use oh, those. Really? That sounds like a cool product. Yeah. We'll see, won't we? We'll I see. bought them a while ago, and I haven't really used them, so we'll see if they're a cool product product or not <laughs> all right you got here we oh, go you got two minutes to find out Man. okay well, now i'm regretting when i remember when i was like oh let's let's reduce it to two minutes well that was a mistake 
because I would like to have much more than two minutes with a lot of these things. I know. I know. I think we should. It should have been staggered. It should have been staggered. We should have started off with short times and then uh, gone to longer times. But it's still kind of random. So it's not like you could say, all right, I'm definitely going to need two minutes with watercolor, but I'm going to need like 15 minutes. With Oh, yeah, you're right about the fine liner. It's just not really happy. Crayola's color palette leaves something to be desired. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> this green yeah. is not as natural as I was hoping. Those fine liners are not happy, particularly on top of all this other stuff. No. Yeah, I've ruined so many fine liners not like taking the time to, um, you know, let something dry or trying to work over something I shouldn't have, like a water base, like a water reactable product, like a watercolor crayon or a watercolor pencil. Yeah, it just isn't happy. I, I was tempted to grab um, a Pentel um, ink brush, you know. Oh yeah, but uh, that's a that's a heavy tool. That's a that's a large caliber instrument. <laughs> but it might be what I need. Oh, I know what I could do. Oh wait, well, how many more are we gonna do? Because I'm I've got I know what I'm gonna do for my next one. We got two more after this. Okay, perfect, perfect. Two more. Yeah, I have no control with these things. Um, I'm just like. Yeah, this is a disaster too for me. So all right. Live and learn. Okay. Ah, I cannot get in the middle of the camera for whatever reason. That looks We're great. It's, it's where, okay. where, show me where you put them. Where did you put the Crayolas? Um, I did like some, those bright green there. I I'll use some black on some of the stems. I it's just okay. kind of squiggled out some warts. It's yeah, all right. I'm, I'm in front of the camera. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to uh, this Pentel brush liner. Fine, what's it called? Sign Pen brush micro brush. Have you ever tried right, these micro brushes? Go... They're like. Uh, up. I don't think I have. Um, I don't think I've used those. See that? Oh, we're going. I'm using Stabilo Woodies. Oh, those are nice. Yeah, that's bo a bold, bold color. Yeah, and I need to be able to lay down some color because uh, we need to get, we need to kick this into high gear. If we do do this pentathlon, we should do it like in an art supply store. Ooh, yeah, that would be fun. Right, where the whistle blows and you have to go into a, any given aisle and uh, use whatever's there. Like supermarket sweep or something. Yeah, they should make like a game show like that. Yeah. Right, like right. Survivor or something like that. that. Yeah. But you have to use art supplies. Or yeah. Like the Great Pottery Throwdown. I finally checked that out. That was a. Uh, that's pretty fun. Yeah, we've seen that one. There's also um, there's a glass blowing one, and there's oh, fun. A, there's a there's actually one where they make knives. Oh, neat. Yeah, there's different kinds of crafts one, but there was at one point an art kind of competition event. It was kind of like Project Runway, but for art. Oh, neat. Yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of what you could imagine. It's not, it didn't uh, redefine art as we know it. It didn't even redefine television as we know it. I am like coloring so hard, my whole table is shaking. <laughs> But aren't those things like fairly creamy? They are, but I'm trying to like add more black in the background to kind of give it a little bit of contrast because I'm feeling that I just have a big jumble and I need to create some order here. Whew. All right, uh, last one. What to pick? Uh, what have I used? I feel like I've used more things. I think I'm going to go with uh, Echo Line, Echo Line markers. Could be a disaster. But... Oh, yeah, you might ruin your markers. Because they'll be um, pu pulling up all that stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh shoot, I want some something pointy. Oh, you know what? Do I have what's this? Oh, I'm gonna use the, the Derwent pastel watercolors because I've got a lot of darks here and I think if I use the pastels, it will be these right here. I think it'll be, um, it'll those, show up. Can you, will, you, will you see those sitting on top of all that stuff? Yeah, they're opaque. So I think they'll be fine. Oh, so they're, they're really like a gouache then? They're pretty close to a gouache. Okay. We'll see, we'll see how it does. I mean, I don't. I just discovered I have I two boxes of the same, same graphite tint, but they have different packaging so they must be from like different eras probably like i just pull them out of the bottom of the pencil unit so do you want to still give us two minutes for this or you want to give us more time no, <laughs> to two finish minutes. it up two minutes because <laughs> we're almost the show is almost over all right i'm going okay. go to i'm going back to my a different color pro marker all right here we go all right. So um, let's just briefly talk about your workshop. Why not? Okay. Are you, are you excited about it? I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. And uh, and yeah, I don't have to worry too much because we've you know we've done it already. We yeah, we pre-recorded all the all the content, so it's just showing up live and helping students and uh, yeah, answering and questions yeah, and stuff like that. Answering questions and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think it's what's cool about it. I think is really cool is that we get to make three things. In right number, three completed paintings and they're really nice i mean they're you know they're the kind of things that you could hang up probably right it's not like this garbage we're doing today i'll tell you that much <laughs> hey speak for yourself mine is a masterpiece <laughs> okay so like the garbage i'm doing here <laughs> <laughs> yes no then it's there's no garbage it's not it's called yummy colors not uh taking out the trash but <laughs> but the color effects are really cool though i mean i think the opportunity to i mean we always want color to be brighter at least i do you know that's that's right. why i've been using my ipad so much because there you're basically it's like it's like stained glass working with an ipad you know because you get you get light coming through your color so you get really intense effects but this is your workshop it's doing it on paper so right traditional media yeah yeah, and I, I think layering up is such a freeing thing. You get to use the best of, you're the best, best of all worlds. You have the best attributes. Oh, darn it. I am not done with this. I want to keep working on it. <laughs> the relay this continues. Frustrating. <sighs> I like what's happening because I started to get oh. some actual form in here. But is it in front of, I can't tell if it's in front of the camera or not. Yeah. But I don't have enough time. I need more time. Yeah, I mean, I was struggling to try and get depth too by putting in more and more darkness around it, because yeah. that picture, the picture is, it's a nice picture. It has, um, it has that inky black background. Yeah, right, I'm gonna well, this, keep working. I'm gonna, okay, you I'm gonna keep working. Um, this was really fun. It was fun to do it with it, another person at the same time. Yeah, and uh, kind of high energy. So, all right. Well, we will see you in nine days at, yeah, at the workshop. yeah so yes so and we will be using a bunch of different kinds of cool media in that too um mm -hmm. and we'll be making some some yummy desserts because we're going to be painting strawberry cheesecake and um is that kind of like reese's cups right? yeah yeah and what's the yeah, third stack one up the third gooey. one is, is a cherry. Uh, then there is like a cake, like a cake with sprinkles and cherries right. and fluffy frosting. And yeah, so it's different textures, which is part of what it is. Not only bright colors, but it's also like, how do you represent the different textures that you find in these things? Because I, I felt like I learned stuff from it. I don't know how many desserts I'm going to draw, but I learned mm -hmm. stuff from it that 
is applicable to lots of different things. So that was that was really yeah. cool. So, all right, good. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much. I think you should just be a regular on Draw with Me. I think we should just do this every Thursday, and we can have fun. <laughs> that, that would be fun. That would be totally fun. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thanks again. Thanks for joining me. And uh, let me just sign off with a few final announcements. Um, and I'll see you at the workshop. All right, sounds okay, good. Thanks again. Bye bye. Bye. All right, guys. So we have a bunch of things, as I said, coming up. We've got the Yummy Color. You can still sign up for it. We've got the Drawathon on Saturday. If you want information about it, write to us at info at sketchbookschool.com. Don't use your mailing address. We don't need your mailing address. We're not going to mail you information. There's no time. <sighs> we want to see your relay. Let's see your gourds. So share it on Instagram or on Facebook or in the schoolyard and tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. And then next week, we will have um, a massive parade of gourds, the, the annual gourd. What would you call it? A gourd? walkathon anyway we'll have a bunch of gourds um appearing at the beginning of next week's show the art for all podcast you can hear Lindsay and me talk for another hour if you'd like while you continue working on your relay uh danny's essays.com i got a new one coming out tomorrow and of course subscribe to this channel thank you guys and uh thanks for for being here today and thank you Lindsay, again for being here and for doing this incredible workshop see you soon <laughs>